Chances are. All right, ready? Hey everybody, I'm John Lane with Pilot Pen Corporation, here with my future self. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Brian Goulet here, dressed as John Lane, <laughs> as I did for Halloween. And John got such a kick out of it, you know, he was planning to come here anyway, and I said, you know what? I think I'll dress as him in person. Except now you got a goatee. I've never seen him with a goatee. Well, but I got the classic mustache here, and uh, I had to, I had to color in a little gray. Oh, I thought that was a nice oh, touch yes, that I didn't nice do before. <laughs> to be tr to be truly more authentic. But anyway, you don't think it's a little weird? It's a little weird. Okay. Rachel refuses to look at me. Oh. She made me bring a razor to work so that after this video, I can shave off my mustache. I don't know if that's a, a, a digging to me that she doesn't want to look at you. She doesn't think that I'm, uh, you know, remotely attractive. I don't know what to say about that, but I certainly don't look like myself right now. And nor do I feel like myself. But I'm going to channel your <laughs> Namiki experience here because we have three pretty incredible pens to show. Um, one of them is the new Emperor Shoki, uh, which is a limited edition, which comes in its own box. So it's got, um, uh, well, we're going to go over the whole thing. So uh, Shoki is a legendary Chinese mythological figure. Um, that's reputed to possess talismanic powers. Uh, this is on the Emperor model pen, which is enormous. So essentially as a, as a canvas for this Machia artwork, uh, the Emperor really is, is the ultimate. Um, they have two different styles of Emperor. They have the rounded top and the flat top. This one is a flat top, and they went with no clip so they could have an uninterrupted picture uh, on the pen body itself. So theories about the Shoki uh, are you know, kind of surrounded by folklore. Um, but basically, it it's, goes back to the Chinese Tang Dynasty from like the six to nine hundreds. So it's a pretty, pretty old story, pretty old legend, um, and it's been adopted, you know, in other parts of the world, in, in Japan, uh, Japan really around the Edo period, so like sixteen, seventeen hundreds, or so. Uh, and the legend is essentially that uh, one of the uh, emperors of the Tang period, uh, so that is Emperor. Uh, Wan Zong mm -hmm. uh, became ill, basically had a, fell asleep, had a dream that this, you know, figure, Shoki, um, fought off his demons, his evil spirits. Shoki, um, the demon. And he woke up from this dream, told the dream to some of his, whoever, confidants or whatever that he had. Uh, someone drew out the figure of Shoki as he described, uh, and... Uh, without without seeing it themselves, and apparently it looked exactly like mm -hmm. who he had in the dream. So uh, started worshiping worshiping Shoki as a god, and it's kind of basically a god of of kind of protection of evil spirits. Correct. Like, pretty much got all that right. That is. It's a lot. There's a lot there. A lot of folklore, but um, you know, essentially, there's the the Shoki figure. I guess they use in Japan and other parts of the world, China, um, as kind of a you know, they have like dolls and figures and stuff like that and some of their, their ceremonies and, and things like that as a um, kind of a symbol to ward off uh, evil spirits. There's lots of information on the internet about this. It's a pretty fascinating story. Mm -hmm. um, when I first heard about it, I went on and, and printed this out, basically what Brian just said, and it's an amazing story. And again, Brian said something about the, the clips on these pens. Um, if this story is so intense, that's when they'll do the vest model of the emperor instead of the because they don't want to interrupt the story because you mm -hmm. see that there's a there's a lot going on here. And uh, you know the depictions here embody the wish that disease and disaster will be driven away from those who own this pen that the homes will remain in harmony and in good health. So there's a lot of um, you know a lot of higher level stuff going on mm -hmm. here with this pen. It's not just a pretty pen though that it definitely is. And some of the techniques used on this pen are uh, really kind of advanced, I guess, as right. well. Um, you know, as you know, the Namiki pens can range in price quite a bit from the Nippon art down in the seven, eight hundred dollar range up into the close to ten thousand dollars for this pen. And a lot of that has to do with the amount of time it takes, the techniques used, the difficulty of the techniques, and how much correct uh, how much is on the pen. And this thing is just it's covered. I mean, it's just covered with some really advanced techniques. Um, so it's got the Taka Machie, which is the raised. Uh, technique that's that's what's used on Shoki himself, uh, and then Togadashi, which is the burnished maki, that's what you see on like the bamboo accents and things like that. Right. Um, and then the if I pronounce this right, the shish shishai shishai Togadashi Taka, which is I guess a mixed technique. Close enough. <laughs> Forgive me for butchering that, <laughs> um, but I guess it's that's pretty rare to do a combination technique, and it's it's 
apparently rather difficult. Most of the pens that, that I've written about, it, I have not seen that technique being done. So yes, it is pretty rare. So kind of special, yeah. Uh, there's only 99 of these in the world. Uh, and we actually have, this is number 99 that we're featuring right here. We also have number two in the house, if you're interested. Um, and there's meaning behind all of the numbers. Um, and uh, Yutaka Sato is the artist that makes this pen. So pens of this level, they're making, one artist is dedicating uh, themselves to the making of this pen. And a pen like this is probably gonna take, I mean, you're talking months, right? To make at least these four. pens? At least four months. Something, something like this is so intricate. I mean, there's a lot going on there. And, and all the raised portions, I mean, that's built up mm -hmm. one layer at a time with all different lacquer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. Not that they're taking four months to make one single pen, they're making, you know, multiples. It's, but it's it takes... a series of, of, when I've seen them, they've done maybe 12 at a time, and it's building the pattern up, putting it back on, letting it dry, and then going down. By the time they get to the 12, maybe the first one is, is dry, and they can, they can start over again. Yeah, and it takes, you know, maybe <clears throat> a week or so for a layer of lacquer to cure, right? Like this year's lacquer, it's... it's it's, it's some pretty tough stuff when it's cured, but it takes a little while. Yeah, Urushi lacquer is one of the hardest substances around. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. And it also comes with a special ink bottle. Yeah, it's got the bamboo that kind of reflects what's on the pen, so that's pretty neat. Uh, I'm the assuming that's Namiki Black in there. Artist card, mm -hmm. the story that pretty much what Brian just read there. Yep, and then the uh, it's an eyedropper filling pen, uh, so it's got a huge ink capacity. Oh, there you go. It's got a little plate inside the box. With the number on it. The number on it. And uh, it's got the, the large nib on it. This is the number 50 Pilot nib, which is, as far as I know, the biggest production nib in the world on any fountain pen. As far as I know, yes. Uh, even bigger than like Pelican M1000 or Mont Blanc 149. It's pretty dang big, which is amazing. And it's an incredible writer. It's actually a fairly light pen for the size that it is because it's got an ebonite base, ebonite feed um, with Urushi lacquer on the feed. and. Uh, for those people that I know that have bought these, they ink them up and mm -hmm. write with them daily. So, uh, you know, despite the fact that it might seem like a priceless heirloom, uh, which that which it is, it's uh, it's definitely a comfortable daily writer. And from what I understand, the artists get just tickled when they know that people are actually inking they these do. up and carrying them they around. They do, and they get even more irritated when they hear that they're not, that they're just put away, because a lot of collectors will just buy these and open it up, look at it, and put it away. But some real diehards um, oh, have oh. asked me how to ink it up, and inking it up is fairly simple. And it actually comes with an eyedropper, if an I'm eye not dropper. mistaken. Not so, that you couldn't acquire one if you have the means to get this pen. This will take about an eyedropper and a half. So then you hold it upright, put the nib back on. There's your little eyedropper. Ta-da! And then you open up the back end. Which, which you, you wouldn't even realize that there is a back end to no. that because it's so seamless in the uh, the fit and finish of that finial. I mean, literally, it's like it dis disappears. And then to clean it, a little warm water and just a flush. There you go. And then you close it back up. Now, do you need to unscrew it like that to write with it? Yeah, a little, little air into the uh, into the barrel. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then when you're done, so this back. one. This pen is coming in a fine, medium, and broad nib. There you go, 18 karat gold. Now, let's move on to another pen, shall we? Okay. So, gorgeous pen, we have these in stock. You can check those out, as of the launch of this video, anyway. Uh, we have two other pens that are the Yukari Royale size. Um, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the newer one. Uh, which is the Lioness and Cubs. And mm -hmm. this we have available uh, right now, or mm -hmm. very, very soon, uh, in the medium nib. The fine and the broad are going to come a little bit later, right? Right. Like later in 2020. Um, but this pen uh, is really interesting, and I like the story of this one as well. So the Yukari Royale pen, it's a slightly smaller pen, but it's still a pretty big pen overall. This one's about 46 grams in weight, so it's pretty hefty, because uh, it has a brass base instead of the ebonite base of the Emperor. Um, and this one is, uh, the artist is uh, Kokukai uh, Matsuzawa. Uh, and that's the signature on the pen, but I guess Mr. Huuhara also helped. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that's kind of uncommon. Normally it's a group that does a pen, uh, or it's one artist. Yeah, Kokukai means group, which means that the, the pen is, like I would do a little bit, pass it to you, mm -hmm. 
um, shoot it around the room. Yeah. And so it's... Uh, Maybe like focus on a specific technique on the pen and right. a specialty of sorts. Um, but the, it's, it's usually the more limited edition ones that one artist is doing the whole thing Correct. start to finish. So this one's kind of interesting that it's not a whole group, but it's really just a pair. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of neat. But uh, the pen itself, this one does have a clip, um, which is... You know, uh, they still decorate the clip to, to match the pen, but it's not as seamless as what we have on the Emperor there. Right. Um, but this one has got the Togadashi Taka raised uh, burnished uh, Machie, and it's got some rod in it as well. Which is the cubs and the mother. And so the story behind this um, is essentially based off the, the expression, spare the rod and spoil the child, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially based off of what lionesses do with their cubs, essentially to prepare them for the harsh, cruel world that they will face when they're older. They will throw their cubs down into a ravine and look over them, inspire them, motivate them, if you will. But the cubs basically have to fight their way out of the ravine. Correct. So it's, it's meant to kind of um, teach the, the, the cubs uh, how to overcome adversity. A little tough love. Tough love indeed. I <laughs> uh, haven't done that with my kids. No throwing down the ravine, so to speak. But uh, certainly the story kind of resonates in that, uh, you know, if you baby your kids, it's going to be tougher for them in the real world. Mm -hmm. So you do that with the protection of the mother and the kind of the, um, whatever, the discipline, the whatever you want to call it, the structure that you can provide as a parent, uh, that when you provide that for your child, you're preparing them better for the real world. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and some of the interesting things on this pen is um, it's got a, a fair amount of blue on the cub, uh, at least especially that one cub, uh, which I, have, I haven't seen a lot of blue. There's, there's not pens. a lot of blue on the, on the previous uh, pens that we've introduced. The one that comes to mind is Mirasaki Shikibu, the emperor that we currently have out. That's got a wide range of blues, greens, and oranges, which are a rare combination. And then Brian mentioned the rodden on the back here. You really have to see the, the detail. We almost didn't even see it because in the pictures, it's really tough to see the rodden on this one. It's not like it's splashed with rodden like some of the other pens or like the frog that we're going to show in a second. Um, it's really kind of hidden in there on the lioness's body. So little little hidden gems for you, almost quite literally. Um, uh, and then it's, it's gold and silver powder that are used uh, to create these techniques. Again, this is the raised technique as well. Lots of layers of lacquer, lots mm -hmm. of time. So um, this pen is in it's fifty eight hundred dollars. Um, fair amount of effort to do. And this pen, it's not an eyedropper fill like the Emperor. This one, um, it takes the the typical Pilot Namiki uh, cartridges and converters, but it comes with a Con seventy, which is the larger um, filling capacity that you have with Pilot and Namiki pens. And the two tone <coughs> Fuji nib, which looks beautiful. Um, and this is the number 20 size nib, so I think this is the maybe third biggest nib that they have. It's definitely smaller than the Emperor. Um, well, we have the, a 20, we have the 30 in the, the, 30, in the Custom right. Yurushi. That's right. So that one, the Custom Yurushi one is slightly bigger, um, but it's bigger than uh, maybe a Custom 824 or, custom, or 823, Custom 74. It's, it's slightly bigger than both of those. Um, yeah, and there's not a whole ton of these available yet, right? You've got a handful of them. Uh, initially in, in the U.S. And what the good news about it is that all of you have gone through the past couple of years with the anniversary pens, and Machie has been at a shortage. Um, the good news is that these are back, in, they're in the regular line. The frog we introduced a year and a half or so ago, and I haven't seen one of these in quite a while, so the good news is that Machie production is Seems starting to catch up. It's getting back on track. Yeah. Um, it still probably won't be really back on track until late 2020, but this is really wow. good news that we've got a, we've got a new addition to the Yukari line, Yukari Royal line. And the frog is back, which I think is one of the one of the cooler pens that we've done. Yeah, so let's talk about the frog because we have one right here. Um, so this is done by artist Yumi Hayashi, and this is um, a Togadashi Taka uh, Makie as well as Rodden. This one, the Rodden, is a little more prominent. Mm -hmm. uh, I know everyone around here freaks out with Rodden, myself included. So whenever you can see that very prominently, that's always appealing. Um, and this one is kind of packed with meaning as well. You know, it's got frogs, leaves, water, kind of a variety of flowers. The flowers are in various states of bloom to kind of represent the passage of time. Um, and frogs have significant meaning, um, especially in, the, in, I believe, in the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. um, so it's protection of travelers um, and hospitality because I guess frogs, when they, um, you know, after they finish their hibernation, they go back to wherever it was that they were born 
to reproduce. So as far away as they've gone, they will travel all that way back to get back home. So there's a lot of kind of traveling and home hospitality, that kind of thing, themed in there with frogs. Um, also, there's meaning of kind of fertility because they lay just a boatload of eggs uh, in one sitting when they do reproduce. Um, it's also a symbol of wealth because um, it was actually the, I guess, sort of the symbol or the logo that the feudal tax collectors would use back in the day. Um, so a symbol of kind of some prosperity there. Um, and it's also a symbol for resurrection and metamorphosis, kind of the transformation of man because of the, the process that frogs go through. And you see lily pads, which frogs are kind of synonymous with. And there's a lot of those in yeah. Japan as well. Um, this is the pen-wise, you know, the body and all that is going to be the same as Linus and Cubs. It's that Yukari Royale, brass barrel, so same weight and everything, same number 20 size nib. Fine, medium, and broad on this one as well. 18 karat gold, mm -hmm. con 70 converter. So these are going to be great daily riders as well. Personally, I like, I actually like the size of the Ikari Royale. I think the best of any of the Miki pens. It's very comfortable for me. I have slightly larger hands. The, the higher weight is good. It posts well. Um, it's got like a felt lining on the inside of the cap. You know, it's, you're always a little nervous. You think you're going to like scratch these right. pens, even though it's the most durable lacquer basically that you can get in the world. Um, but still, the artist has spent a lot of time on these pens, so yeah, you, you don't want to scratch it. You won't scratch your Rishi lacquer by putting on a cap. It, yeah. If you drop it, it will break. But yeah, you don't want to no. run over this with your car. No. But, uh, you know, certainly for just daily use, they're going to be quite durable, uh, even as delicate as they may appear to be in their design. So, yeah, these are gorgeous pens. I mean, the more that I'm learning and more that I'm getting to see these Namiki pens coming out, the, the more I appreciate all that goes into them um, and certainly the theming and the stories behind them we got three very very strong pens mm -hmm. here in that respect so there you have it um, you can learn more about these on gouletpens.com or at the next show that you go to you can go up to john and say hey john i saw you in that goulet video i have a story to tell you a little later on about the, the latest the latest one <laughs> <laughs> john and i have kind of a running thing because he he uh, was supportively but reluctantly started doing these videos with us back in 2016. Uh, and you've been in a number of them now. Yes, I have. <laughs> You're starting to get your own little fan following when you go to some of these events. He doesn't do a lot of events, but he'll do some every now and then. Yeah. And you're starting to get requests for selfies and other things like that. So a little taste of fame there. Even though he's been in the industry for however many decades, yeah. um, you're now starting to get publicly recognized. <laughs> So, he loves it when that happens, and he texts me whenever it does. Yeah, with one particular emoji, I text him. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to leave some comments. Let us know what you think. Reach out to our team if you have any questions about these. Mom said to say hi, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, we joke that I'm like his little twin brother or something. But uh, Anyway. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome, John. I'm going to go shave so that Rachel won't look at me again. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching, and right on. <laughs>